I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Well, good evening, I guess, but welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm so thrilled today to introduce to you Annie O'Brien, and her story is so unique. It, uh, she's a convert to the church, and we'll get into that. So welcome, Annie. Thanks Thank for, you. Thanks Very for good coming to be all here. the way from California. Yes. Thanks for making the effort to, to be here. Um, as I mentioned, you were a convert, so you really spent your first many years as a other than Mormon, what, yes. what, where, how mm -hmm. were you raised and where were you um, born and so on? Born in Southern California. Oh, you were, okay. And raised in a Roman Catholic home. Oh. Went to 12 years of Catholic school. Oh, that's an interesting uh, yeah. experience, <laughs> isn't it? And uh, I'm the youngest of five. Yeah. Uh, three brothers and one sister. Okay. And uh, my older brother, Philip, uh, was the one in the family that went the wrong direction, according to our parents then. <laughs> according to Roman Catholics? Yes. Huh? And um, he became LDS. He converted to the LDS church when had he was 23. Or how did he? No, he was just fascinated with um, uh, the culture. I think he was, he yeah. was looking for um, that family kind of atmosphere. Though we had a large family, our family was rather disconnected. Mm -hmm. And um, I think he was looking for more of a family kind of life for himself. He did meet a young lady while he was in the church mm -hmm. and they got engaged. And um, that's when I first even heard about Mormonism. Mormonism. And so he would come to my house and he would bring movies, you know, about the creation of the world and so all these things teach to, you about Mormonism, exactly, guess, to yeah. show me that, um, he had found the truth. And how old were you at this point? I was about 18. Oh, okay. And um, and I just thought, whatever. You know? <laughs> but I did watch his life. And I really believe that he experienced a born-again experience uh, within the LDS Church. Oh. Because the way he spoke about Jesus Christ is not the way that most LDS people mm. that I learned later yeah. would speak about Jesus Christ. Does, There's, there's think... few that I've heard like... You know, they'll make the statement of, well, the Lord spoke to me or yeah. things like this. And yeah. you don't normally hear yeah. LDS people saying that, but he <clears> talked <throat> like that. And um, so anyway, he uh, was about six weeks from his wedding uh, and the temple. Mm -hmm. And he was in a hang glider crash and was oh, killed. No. And um, his death was... It just rocked my world sure. in a huge way. We yeah. were very close, and yeah. he was on the way to my house to pick me up to go to the movies. Um, and, well, he never came. And sure. my father called, and when I picked up the phone, my dad said, um, Anne, Philip is dead. And then my dad hung up. Oh, gosh. And I was just, well, you can just imagine, yeah. you know, a young person like that. Yeah. and. And so anyway, I totally did a tailspin during that time. I just couldn't believe that a loving God would take away my brother, who was a wonderful person, mm -hmm. and um, leave behind all this carnage. Yeah. And I became very um, angry. I was very angry with God. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go to his funeral. I mean, I did go, but I don't to this day remember very much of it at all. Your heart wasn't there. <laughs> no. And, uh, well, first of all, he wasn't Roman Catholic. And my parents, of course, had a Roman oh. Catholic 
um, funeral and the burial was done by the LDS church. And they uh, really reached out to me and uh, loved me in a way that I had never experienced uh, before. And I sensed a peacefulness that I never experienced before, but I didn't really know what that was mm. then, but it was attractive. Mm -hmm. And I think those seeds that were planted in my heart later, the enemy really used those in my life when I went through another trauma in my life. So you weren't converted at that no, point? No, I that just was... kind of, you know, I noticed that there were things about the church that though I would go with my brother and I'd go to the sacrament meetings and I'd go to the youth, um, barbecues and yeah. the fireside and yeah. all that stuff. Um, and people were very nice to me. And the lady that he was dating that he was going to marry was a very sweet lady. But her, her sister's family were different. The guys were kind of, they just kind of gave me the creeps. That <laughs> kind of look, you know. Yeah. And I just thought, you know, I'm just not ready for religion. Okay. <laughs> And then after he passed away uh, in that tragic accident, I had no desire for anything to do with God. Um, I basically just, actually what I did was I got in my car and I drove up to the mountains where the accident occurred. I took a big giant rock and I threw it as far as and hard as I could and I told God, you know, I hate you for what you did. Oh, mad. Yeah. I was really hurt yeah. and angry. Yeah. So, um, of course, all of that led to my converting to Christianity, my becoming a born again Christian, because there were people really? praying for me, yes. Oh. And um, I had a nurse that I worked with at this little hospital, and she told me, I'm, I'm really sorry about what happened to your brother, Annie, and I just want you to know that we're praying for you. And I looked at her and said, you know, you're just wasting your breath, because God doesn't care. Yeah. I mean, you know, I was just really bitter. Yeah. Um, but long story short, as far as that's concerned, um, I was invited by two other people to come to a little church. Uh, Christians again. It was a Calvary Chapel in oh. Southern California. It was okay. Raul Reese's church. Yeah. And um, I, he had a message that Sunday that I went that was so tailor-made for my life uh, that I was moved by his spirit, by the Lord's spirit, to give my life to Christ. And I did, and I was radically born again. I really was. I couldn't stop talking about Jesus. You know, and I shared them with anybody that would give me five seconds to tell them about them, you know. So, and so years later, uh, when no. I was 21, I got married. And Excuse me, did you, did you have that same sense of Jesus and being, turning your life to Christ as, I don't want to particularly point out Roman Catholic, mm -hmm. Catholicism, no. but in either that or early no. on, mm -mm. Mm -mm. you just didn't Nothing feel like that, that same thing. Never had understood what it meant to have an intimate relationship with Christ, yeah. that you actually are, can be one with Him, that there's a union with Him that can take place because and, of the Holy Spirit. And what in He's life. done for yes, us. Yes, absolutely. That, and that it was a, a personal freak, yeah. sacrifice that He made. He would have done it just for me yeah. or just for you yeah. had we been the only ones on the earth. That's how much He loved us. Yeah. I'd never heard that before, though I'd heard about Jesus my whole life, yeah. you know. And I do believe there are Christians that love Jesus that are in the Catholic Church. Sure. Um, just like I think there's some that are in the Mormon, the Mormon Church, Church, you know. Yeah. Um, but for me, that was not what God had in mind. Okay. And so I got married, and um, I have three children. And uh, we moved to Salt Lake uh, because one of our children had a very serious uh, and rare type of asthma. And we had to move out of the area that we lived in in Southern California. So mm -hmm. that's what brought us here. here Salt Lake. And um, uh, my husband was a Christian, or claimed to be a Christian. Um, and we were married 15 years, and then my husband decided he didn't want to be married anymore. Okay. So he came home one day <laughs> and uh, told us that, told me that, and he left uh, with me with $100 in the bank and three kids and um, left the area. And so we Another started... a tough time. Yes, it was a horrible time, yeah. a very horrible time. And um, I was part of a church, um, and um, they were new in the area, they had just moved into the area to start this work that they were doing. And um, so I was part of that foundational part of that church. In fact, I had prayed that God would bring a church that taught the Word of God verse by verse, chapter by chapter for three years with several other women. We were praying that there would be one that would come here. Yeah. And um, finally one did. So after uh, my husband left, uh, I went through about 18 months of litigation and it was uh, 
harrowing, truly, mm -hmm. because uh, we had a business, his family was very wealthy, it, and there was money involved, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> anyway, um, about two or three weeks before the divorce was final, um, my pastor had been visited by my husband, and my husband said he wanted to come home. So they encouraged me to let him come home and to forgive him a second chance. and to give him another chance. And so though I was very reluctant uh, not to forgive, but to reconcile because I didn't trust him. Trust him. And um, he had done a lot of really bad things. Mm -hmm. And so I let him come home and uh, within about three months, uh, we had friends come up from Southern California. It was my best friend, actually. Mm -hmm. Christian women uh, came up to visit us with her children. And one morning I got up and found them together. Oh, boy. And so I had a nervous breakdown. I mm -hmm. just totally fell apart. I couldn't believe that my Christian girlfriend would do that, let alone my husband who just got through telling the pastor that he was wanting to change his ways. And so it was really a devastation in my life. Yeah. And um, it proved to be uh, the pivoting point for me spiritually because um, I was so consumed with working, going to college, taking care of three children and trying to stay mentally afloat of the stress with the divorce. Yeah, there's a lot um, going on. Huh? That, you know, being in the word that the way that I should have been wasn't there. I didn't have the time to really spend really studying the word. So I gleaned everything off of Sunday service or Wednesday night, <laughs> you know, and then I would have bits and pieces during the week because I just did not have the time. Yeah. And, so um, how did the LDS come back into well, you? Well, this is what happened. Um, my workers at the hospital that I worked at, I had several people that introduced me to, you know, the way that God had a plan for a happy life. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, someone gave me a Book of Mormon, and I um, began to read. And when I got to Jacob, I think I told you about that, Jacob chapter 2, um, it said here, in verse 35, Behold, you have done greater iniquities than the Lamanites, our brethren, and you've broken the hearts of your tender wives and lost the confidence of your children because of your bad examples before them. And the sobbings of their hearts ascend up to God against you. And because of the strictness of the word of God, which cometh down against you, many hearts died pierced with deep wounds. When I read that, I just broke. It just, <laughs> I just cried because I thought, Wow, there's a God that really cares, yeah. and there's a church that really believes in a moral life. And it made me start to think, wow, maybe the evangelical church I've been a part of isn't really the right church. Maybe they're maybe just it is a, the LDS church. That's true. Yes, huh? exactly. And that's how it began. Mm -hmm. And so I would, I didn't rush into anything because I was very. Did the missionaries come over? The missionary. I went through four sets of missionaries. Oh, okay. They came to my house, they talked with me, I had question after question after question, and they, and they were, if they couldn't answer them, they would send another set of missionaries. Okay. And by the fourth ones, um, one of the girls I worked with's husband came with them, and he was just a really articulate, and uh, he, was, he, he still is a very wonderful person, and, yeah. and they're still sure. friends of mine after today, they may not be, but... <laughs> um, he really led me to believe that, you know, Heavenly Father had this plan for me, and it was to have my family be together forever, mm -hmm. and uh, never told me about the other doctrines that are in the church. That came later. Mm. Um, and so I began to prepare. Yeah, it's a little superficial, yes, yes. I think, with what they share with mm -hmm. you. I began to prepare to <clears throat> go to the temple, and uh, during this time I met a doctor that I uh, worked in the same company with, and we started dating. And he was LDS. He was kind of a Jack Mormon, though. He really wasn't religious. Mm -hmm. And he had been divorced. And uh, we were, I knew him for five years. We were good friends. And so it just kind of felt like it was going to be something wonderful, you know. Mm -hmm. And so um, as I'm preparing for the temple, it's my time to go in. And uh, this was in November that I went through the temple, and uh, he asked me to marry him. Which and temple so, was it, by the way? Salt Lake Salt Temple. Lake. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I was just beside myself in love, you know, at yeah. this point, that, wow, mm -hmm. this is a person who just treats me like a queen and loves my family and my children and, you know, all the things LDS that go with Annie's LDS, and, yeah. and he's really wanting to live a good, 
godly life. Yeah. You know, he doesn't want to get drunk and he doesn't want to smoke and all that <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, you know? sure. And to me, that was all important stuff because sure. all those things factored into my husband falling away yeah, from yeah. God and all of that. So uh, we got married in October of that year and um, went on our honeymoon. And while we were on our honeymoon, I discovered that there was something very wrong with this picture. Oh, dear. Yes. And um, I'm not going to name him because he's... <laughs> still in the area and um but anyway i discovered that he was stockpiling drugs mm -hmm. and um as a nurse i had a responsibility not just for the moral part of it but also for an ethical yeah, professional legal, part of it yeah. and legal yeah. and so i had to make this decision of what to do and um so i confronted him and asked him if he would please tell me if this was true that he was doing this and i said um I'm only going to give you one chance to tell me the truth. Because by this point, the trust issue is already yeah, completely already destroyed. Suspect of anything. Exactly. Yeah. And um, he denied it. And behind my back, I had a bag that I'd taken out of a hidden safe that I found in our home. Mm. And uh, I just took him out and said, you're, you're lying. And he literally fell to the floor against the wall and begged me to... to uh, to help him. To bear, oh, to help him? Yes. Okay. And I just turned around and walked out of the house. And so, but you'd been through the temple. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could t spend yeah, a second on Yeah, I came to the that. temple after this was that, before that all happened with my husband. Um, I went through the Salt Lake Temple, and this is what probably brought the catalyst of everything with my marriage and all that other stuff was um, in. When I went through the process of the temple, when I was in the first level where, uh, not even the washing and the anointings, because in my heart, my focus was, I am going to be consecrated to Jesus Christ, you know, and receiving the that endowments. That really was your perspective yes, of that what you was were my, doing. That's what I was told by others, yeah. you know, that, that I'm, this is all about Jesus Christ. And so like, well, hey, I love Jesus Christ, so this isn't going to be a problem for me, yeah. right? Yeah. Then we got into the creation room, and I just thought, there's something really wrong here. And um, as we con continued to go through the levels of the temple ceremony, when by the time we got to the level before you go through the veil, um, where they did the, uh, the prayer, you know, they learned all of the passwords and all of that stuff, I was so literally physically ill in my stomach, I just couldn't. I just couldn't believe that this that they were doing that. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what is this? This is not Christian, you know. I didn't know what it was, but I just knew it wasn't Christian, wasn't Christian. you know. And so, and there's very little Jesus in in all of that the, as well. It right? was just and, pagan. That's all I could think of was this pagan, you know. Uh -huh. And um, so it was time for me to go to the veil and give my secret, everything. Yeah. And uh, I got there and I was literally shaking. I just, I just wanted out of there so bad. And I knew I couldn't just run out of yeah, there, you know. Yeah. My chance was gone locked, from way down before. I locked know. in, yeah. Exactly. So I walked into the celestial room, and I will never forget it, ever. Sitting down in this, pl this plush chair, this plush yellow velvet chair. And as I sat down, at that time, the door that was considered the Holy of Holies was right in front of where I was sitting. Yeah. They've moved it since then, which I think is really interesting. But it was right in front of me up this little staircase, and above the door were the words, the Holy of Holies. And I sat in this chair, and I looked at that door, and I said, that is not the Holy of Holies. And I was, I just couldn't believe it that they had that there. And as soon as that came out of my mouth, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit as clear as I'm sitting next to you. And he said, Ichabod. And I thought, Ichabod? Ichabod. <laughs> What's Ichabod? But I knew in my heart that that was something from the Bible, that it was a Hebrew word. I just knew it. I don't know how I knew it. But you heard the word Ichabod. I heard him say Ichabod. Well, that got my attention. Sure. And um, then it was time we could leave, and I left, in it, and I raced to my car, and I opened my car door, and there was my Bible at the time was sitting on the, the seat, and it was uh, different than this little one. And I opened it up to the back of it. It was a missionary edition that had a really big concordance and stuff, yeah. and I looked up the word Ichabod. I didn't even know how to spell it, E or I, but I saw this word, and I went straight to First Samuel. 
and I read these words. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel. And I went, The glory is departed. Well, then when I got home, <laughs> I got out my New American Standard Bible, and I read, the, the, you know, I read this little caption that said that it was the son of Phineas, which was one of Eli's sons, which I had known was not a very good boy, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that the Ark of the Covenant had been taken captive, and that was such a shock on top of losing her husband and her father-in-law and her brother-in-law all at the same time that she gave birth to this boy, and then she dies in childbirth. The whole thing's death. Yeah. And the message that I got was that God was wanting me to know that had he not spoken to me, I would have been in captivity. Wow. Because that's what happened to the ark. Yeah, just like the ark. And so I went straight to my husband, my Mormon husband, and said, I will never, ever go back in that church. I will never go back to that temple, ever, ever, ever. It's Ichabod. And he said, what What's is Ichabod, Ichabod <laughs> Annie? And I described to him, and he said, you know, you've got to go more than once. Yeah. You know, because it's like a college and you learn, you know, all As this. You go along, exactly. You'll get used and, to it. And, you know, that kind of calmed me, but I had made the decision that no, 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 no. Well, see, God already knew what was going to happen in the future with his drug addiction and with all the things that he yeah. was hiding from me. Plus, you already had this relationship with Jesus. Exactly. That, that, Thank God yeah. that I did. Yeah. And, um, Thank God for his word. I mean, his word is what he spoke to me, his wow. very word. So after that happened with the drug revelation and then the confrontation, um, my husband left and he annulled our marriage. Mm. And um, I went to see a friend of my father's who was a monk, truly, <laughs> up in Huntsville. He was an oh, old yeah. man up, up in Huntsville. In monastery, yeah. I had to talk to somebody who would understand that I had a decision to make and what was I going to do. Yeah. And so I visited him up there. He was still alive, which he was probably at that time in his 60s. He's now in his 80s. Um, and um, he said to me, he said, Aunt Elizabeth, he called me Aunt Elizabeth, he said, you have a very, very difficult decision to make because you have now been on the inside and that's not going to go over very well if you stay on the outside of Mormonism. Mm -hmm. And he said, either you're going to follow the real Jesus or you're not. And if you choose to follow Jesus, you will lose everything. He told me that. Wow. Can you commit to follow him even though that's a possibility? And that was always the most important thing in your life. It anyway, was the wasn't? idol of my life, yeah. my family. Jesus. And um, my family was my idol. That's oh, what God family. showed me okay. through that, yes. Okay. And so now I had a choice to make. Either I yeah. was going to follow Jesus or I was going to hold on to my dream, my family. And um, I wound up having to leave the state of Utah. Uh, for safety reasons. Hmm. And this is why I have never spoken in public about what I experienced because uh, my husband was uh, very well known and uh, his hmm. associates are very high in the and church. And you went back to California. And I went back to California, went to my brothers and um, in open arms. I mean, when I left the state, I cried all the way to California. Hmm. Um, just a broken woman. Yeah. Um, but I knew that Though none would go with me, I had to follow Jesus. My children at this time were teenagers, and they chose to not go with me. One wanted to go with me, and he wound up coming. Um, the other two wanted to stay in Salt Lake, and they stayed with their dad. Now, are they LDS? Then? No. Oh, mm -mm. Okay. And uh, So how are you feeling now about your decision? Well, God has used that decision <laughs> to reach other lives for Christ, yeah. and that makes Praise it God. worth it. Yeah. So I haven't worked with LDS, but I've worked with Mennonites, oh. and their religious system is very similar very to the LDS church. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Their grace is not enough. It's grace plus. Yeah. And so I just finished a seven-year term working with Mennonites. I worked in South America as well as in North America, wow. lived in the community amongst them, yeah. and I was given the privilege to teach the Word of God verse by verse, chapter by chapter to women they who had never receptive. been taught like that. And they didn't know anything about grace. No, no. Yeah. 
no, not no, not like you and I know. No. But there has been beautiful fruit in the last year. I've now been done with their worth working in that community for a year, mm -hmm. and out of that seven years came three women that um, are no longer part of the Mennonite community. Yeah. Uh, one in particular is a ra born and raised generational Mennonite. Um, and she's doing really well. She's bought her own business. Oh, and neat. so just watching uh, these women uh, know that they are so special to God, yeah. that they aren't just special the way they're told as <laughs> being in the LDS church, you know yeah. how we're special. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but to really know that uh, we have a relationship with the God of the universe in an intimate way. Yeah and that everything about our life matters to Him, even our sorrows. And though He gives us the bread of affliction or the waters of sorrow, yeah. um, He still is faithful even in those times. And um, He has proven Himself to me over and over and over in my life. And um, two of my boys are walking with Christ now. And uh, oh, one of them here in Salt Lake is still not interested yeah. in religion whatsoever. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of that comes from the trauma of what they went through, yeah. uh, through divorce and, and my religious exploits. You know, I really felt spiritually schizophrenic for a while. Yeah, That's I'm what sure I call it. You know, it's like... And yet you probably anchored back to your born yes, again moment absolutely. or that time when you yes. turned your life to Christ yes. and, and um, felt so strongly that he was there I've and this, spent, uh, this free gift that yes. he's given us. The 20 year, I've spent 20 years um, studying Mormonism and... Um, have you learned a lot more about Mormonism I have. now than you Absolutely. do as, as a yes. Mormon? Yes, and, and what makes that wonderful is that uh, I have a passionate love for the Mormon people. I love the people. Yeah. Um, God put that there because when I left, I, I shook the dust off my feet, so to speak, as yeah. far as religion goes. Yeah. But uh, the first time I returned to the Salt Lake area during the last 20 years, I've only been here three times in 20 years, mm. um, uh, it was during conference, oh. and uh, they had built the new conference center, and I hadn't seen it yet. And mm -hmm. I got stuck downtown in traffic, and I looked at those people going up the staircase, you know, up the plank to the top of that building, and I just wept like a baby in my car. I just yeah, was I like, I oh. can't believe it, but our time's almost gone. Okay. Yeah, but I feel that same way, that they're just blind. Yes. They just don't have that understanding or a deeper understanding no. of, of who Jesus is and this right. free gift of grace right. that he's given us. So, it's such a beautiful gift. Yeah, well, Annie, what a wonderful story, and you've been through so much, I, but I think God's hand has been with you, and, yeah. and now you understand that, and I mm -hmm. guess feel that same thing that he's yeah. watched over you. Thanks yeah. so much Thank for being you. willing Thank to come and share. Thank yeah, you for having me. Thank you for It's my me. pleasure, and coming all the way from California yeah. just to do this. <laughs> we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.